James Monroe. James Monroe. The James Monroe. James Monroe. James Monroe. It all began in Westmoreland County, Virginia on April 28, 1758, the birth of our fifth president, James Monroe. Monroe's family immigrated from Scotland. Monroe's father, Spence Monroe, had been a prosperous farmer. Like almost any other prosperous family, slaves were generally involved. Monroe had been tutored and homeschooled by his mother until age 11. From 1769 to 1774, he attended Campbell Town Academy, which had been considered as the best school in the entire colony of Virginia. After his father died, he decided to attend the College of William Mary in January of 1774 with the intention of studying law. Eldest of seven children, he was expected to inherit his father's estate merely at the age of 16. But it all changed when the British attacked. Monroe dropped out of school to join the American forces in the revolution against the tyrannical rule of King George. At the age of 18, he became an officer in the Continental Army. His first battle had been at the Battle of Lexington and Concord. In addition, James Monroe had accompanied George Washington at the Battle of Trenton, but he was severely wounded, eventually ending his tenure as a soldier. I am General Washington. Listen to me. Listen to me. In a few hours, we will march south to attack Trenton. If word of this gets out, hundreds of my men will die. You will be detained for three hours after we march, then you will be set free. I am sorry that you are suffering, but we are all suffering. As the protege of Thomas Jefferson, Monroe resumed the study of law under his guidance. This resembled the beginning of a lifelong relationship that would soon become of his tutelage. He officially began his practice of law after completing the bar exam in Fredericksburg, Virginia. In 1782, James Monroe was elected to the Virginia House of Delegates. Monroe was later chosen for the Continental Congress, serving from 1783 to 1786. During his service as a congressman, he addressed his concern for the Constitution, noting that the ability to amend it and the inclusion of Bill of Rights were both necessary. On February 16, 1786, James Monroe married Elizabeth Courtright, who would later become the First Lady under Monroe's presidency. James Monroe and his wife would eventually have three children together. From 1790 to 1794, he served as a U.S. Senator, also becoming part of the Democratic Republican Party in 1791 through the influence of Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. In 1794, he was elected as a minister to France and showed sharp diplomatic skills. While in France, Monroe was able to free Thomas Paine and other American prisoners. While in France, Monroe supported the French Revolution in his efforts to preserve America's neutrality in the conflicts between the French and British. George Washington disproved his actions and sent him back to America. He would only serve as a minister to the French from 1794 to 1796. He then returned to Virginia to take on his new role of governor in 1799, and he would continue to serve until 1802. During Jefferson's term as president, Monroe would be reappointed as minister to both France and Britain. Monroe was also understanding towards slaves. While senator of Virginia, he attempted to set up the country of Liberia in West Africa, where free national slaves of African origin could live. In 1803, he would eventually help negotiate alongside Robert Livingston the greatest real estate deal in the history of the U.S., the Louisiana Purchase. With the intentions of going to France to merely purchase New Orleans for $10 million, he was granted with the offer of taking the entire Louisiana Territory for just $15 million. With popular demand from the Louisiana Purchase and a successful term as a Senator of Virginia, he was appointed as Secretary of State by Thomas Jefferson in 1811. The U.S. would begin to prepare itself for the War of 1812. While the War of 1812 had broken out, James Madison had taken office. After James Monroe's success as Secretary of State, James Madison made no problem appointing him Secretary of War in 1814. In 1816, he took another step, becoming the fifth President of the United States, succeeding James Madison. On March 4, 1817, James Monroe was sworn in as President and he gave his inaugural address. This marked the beginning of his presidency and the area of good feelings. The collapse of the Federalist Party finally became evident and the Democratic Republicans would hold the office. During his presidency, he would be referred to as the last cocktail because he was one of the last founding fathers to serve in the Revolutionary War and become president. He was the first president of the era of good feelings. His vice president for both of his terms was Daniel D. Tompkins, succeeding his role as the governor of New York. 
In Monroe's presidency, John Marshall, the fourth Chief Justice, and the Supreme Court would prioritize their efforts in increasing the powers of both the judicial and federal branch. The ratification of the rush Bagot Agreement resembled the beginning of James Monroe's presidency. This agreement between Great Britain and the U.S., ratified on April 16, 1818, ensured that both countries would prevent naval ships from going on the Great Lakes. In 1817, Monroe sparked a controversy. He sent General Andrew Jackson to move against Spanish Florida to pursue the Seminole Indians and punish the Spanish for aiding with them. In the end, the issue concerning the legality of Jackson's actions were transferred to Monroe, and he decided to leave the decisions towards the war effort unanswered. The Convention of 1818 or Treaty of 1818 was another significant step in Monroe's presidency. The treaty between the British and the Americans acted as a solution for boundary problems between Canada and the United States. As a result, the U.S. gained access to new fisheries in Newfoundland, and the two countries shared Oregon for a decade. The first major peacetime financial crisis in the United States was the Panic of 1819. The event represented the transition from America's dependence status upon Great Britain to having its own dynamic economy. On February 22, 1819, Monroe signs the adams onis Treaty. The treaty ceded all of Florida to the United States for $5 million. On March 6, 1820, Monroe signs the Missouri Compromise. The compromise prohibited slavery in the Louisiana Territory. On September 15, 1815, the Holy Alliance was formed between Prussia, Russia, Austria. And the primary reason behind this alliance was to restore colonies in Latin America to Spanish rule. In the election of 1820, Monroe triumphs and progresses to his second term. He won by an astonishing margin of 231 electoral votes to one for John Quincy Adams, with three votes that had not been casted. In 1823, James Monroe announced the Monroe Doctrine in front of Congress. The doctrine ensured that independent South American countries were safe from English invasion. In 1825, James Monroe's second term ended as John Quincy Adams took office. In 1826, Monroe became the regent of the University of Virginia. In 1829, James Monroe was elected as chairman for the Virginia Constitutional Convention. On July 4, 1831, at age 73, James Monroe died of heart failure and tuberculosis in New York City. He was later buried at Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia.